Shalom and welcome to a, a beautiful day here in Yerushalayim. I'm sitting outside of our shop, right behind us, in uh, probably one of the best cafes to be in. It's called the Holy Cafe. What makes it special is that it's, um, you can sit here and just watch prophecy unfold just by having your coffee. So we're going to focus on today's, uh, this coming Torah portion, how it relates to the events that happen in the world, it always does. And uh, today is the 3rd of June, and uh, let's begin. So in this week's Torah portion, which is uh, Bahalotcha, raising the lights, uh, that's Numbers 8, verse 1 to 12, 16, we hear about the, the first verses talk about the lighting of the menorah. And we hear the word, these following words, Daber el Aaron v'amarta elav, ba'alotcha et anerot el mul p'nei ha-menorah, ya'iru shivat anerot. Meaning, speak to Aaron and say to him, when you light, when you light the lamps, the seven lamps shall cast their light towards the face of the menorah. So the more correct translation is ba'alotcha, it's not lighting, that's la'adlaka, but it's actually raising. When you raise the lights in the menorah, then all the rest will happen. What does that mean to raise the light? And actually, why is the raising of the lights on board that Hashem commands Aaron to do that? So first of all, what does light actually represent? What does or mean? So we see that in order for the purpose of the world to begin, in order for the purpose of the world to begin, God spoke light into being. And King David says in Psalms, Ner your your uh, your word is a lamp for my feet, a light for my path. Something about God's word becoming light that gives us a direction. In fact, its purpose actually goes even further. King David in the same psalm later on says, Your word eliminates the world and allows even the most simple of people to understand. So, if that's so important, if, if Aaron is given a special commandment to light the world, that's a commandment to all of us. We need to find a way to bring light into the world. So how do we do that? How do we share a light, extend the light, bring light into the world? So first of all, I want to go into a short explanation of the concept of soul in Judaism, which I think will illuminate a little bit about how we share light, but also about how the concept of soul relates to what's going on in the world, and especially what's going on in America. When an individual blows a balloon, when I want to blow up a balloon, and I want to tie it, my breath is trapped inside that balloon. Uh, and yet, what do I want to do? What happens if I want to keep my breath in that balloon? But I don't want to tie, I don't want to fasten that balloon together. How do I keep doing that? How do I leave my breath inside the balloon? The only answer is I never stop breathing. I keep breathing into the balloon. Every time I breathe into the balloon, my breath is in that balloon. When God created man, he left his nostrils and his mouth open. And yet, God breathes because, and man breathes because God never stopped breathing into us. And the word for breath, Nishima is the same word as soul. God's breath is our soul. And, and every single one of us has that same breath of God, but not only do we have the same breath of God, we all are sharing the source of that breath. Each one of our individual souls is directly connected to that constant breathing of God into ourselves. And that essentially makes up our purest part of ourselves, our soul, that breath of God. We sometimes do things that cover the breath and everything else. God sometimes shakes us up, but when we, when he shakes us up in such a way that releases that breath, that's the experience of being overwhelmed with this, the breath or the, the ruach of God. It's not something from outside that comes in, it's something from inside that is released. So since we're all receiving it from exactly the same spot, from exactly the same divine source, we actually, without knowing it, are irrevocably linked to each other. And as a result, we are responsible for each one of us. It's not just my breath I'm concerned about. That breath in that person next to me, his soul is as important to me as my soul is to myself. 
And so whatever spark we have within us, whatever unique breath or experience of that breath of God inside of us, we need to understand that that person right in front of us also has some unique experience of that breath. Which, which means that not understanding the unique and holy character of the other person is missing the whole point of our life. And God says, you should, I want you to, in Leviticus, he says, love your neighbor as yourself. He's not saying love your neighbor if he's like yourself. Love your neighbor as yourself, meaning you know inside of you, you have that unique part of your soul, that unique character that is just you. Love that in the other person. And the tragedy is when someone decides to stop the breathing of another. That's the great tragedy of what happened. When someone assumes that my breath is more important than that individual lying on the ground. There's no greater tragedy, there's no greater arrogance in assuming that you need to be able to understand the incredible quality of each man's breath. And once we understand that, once we understand the incredible power in each one of us, we can begin to find that breath in each one of us. So when we reach out to a person, we're not reaching out to what he is, not we're reaching out to what he can become. We can deal and we have to deal with the things that are wrong, but we need to be able to understand that in each one of us, there's a divine spark and a divine breath. And the problem is that when we want to light that soul, give it meaning, Generally, when we try to do that, we do that in such an arrogant way or a self-serving way that the person who hears me try to just sh tell him about the light within him feels judged, feels less than, feels like, what's he telling me? Why? I don't know that. So we usually, that happens because we spend so much time focusing on what's missing in the other person rather than, than the opposite. And that approach never works. Hillel, one of the great chases, says in, in Pirkei Avot, be like the sons of Aaron, who love peace and pursue peace and love people and draw them near to trust. So being like Aaron is the key to bringing light into the world. So let's go back to that original pasuk in the beginning of the parsha. Speak to Aaron and say to him, when you raise the light in the lamp, the so seven lights shall cast their light. Rashi explains that the raising of the light is actually, the Hebrew there is not raising. It's when you cause the light to rise up. Meaning, Talmud says in, 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 in Masechet Shabbat, you are required to kindle the lamp until the flame rises by itself. Your job is not to light his light, your job is to let his light come from within. Meaning, the lamp lighter has to hold the flame close enough pure enough so that that wick suddenly comes to life and the flame comes from within itself. And in order to do that, that lamplighter has to believe that that wick has the power to light itself, that that wick has the incredible breath of God inside of him to become a light. So our, like that lamplighter, our role is to unite the breath of God potential in every single person we meet. Because right? everyone has it. The soul of man is the lamp of Hashem in Proverbs. But for that, we need to turn to the holy which is in every person. Not into the, the difficulties, not into the problems. You deal with the problems, for sure. Somebody's coming at you, you need to deal with that. Somebody is doing something wrong, you need to make him aware of that. But on the other hand, you need to believe in that other person. Because that soul of God rests in every single person one of us. So when we have that belief in the other, the flame rises of its own accord. And so we need to learn, we need to be blessed, that we need to learn that, and I bless you all and myself, that be amongst those lamplighters who light lamps, not amongst those who extinguish lamps, but do it with mutual honor, mutual respect, less arrogance, less belief that you have at all and that person has nothing. That person has so much to teach us. When you light a lamp, your lamp becomes lit. So remember that. It's about sharing each of us our breath. When they intermingle, then suddenly we realize that we have so much to 
grow from each other and and see a light that comes together when all of the people of Israel and all the people in the world come together with that belief in the power of each one of us throughout the world, wherever we are, no matter what faith we belong to, no matter what language we speak, no matter what color of our skin, we all are created and children of the same Father in heaven. And we're all breathing from the same source. And when we know that, then I think Hashem's light will truly be shown in the world. Thank you so much. Thank you for listening. Shalom from Yerushalayim.